Hey guys, welcome to my September 10th DVD update, where I talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten. Probably I've gotten most of these over the last, I don't know, since I was away for three weeks, you know, last month for the um, movie for the Sci-Fi Channel, I didn't really, I bought stuff, you know, while I was away, you know, from Amazon that shipped to the house, but I haven't really, you know, I just sort of started watching this stuff in the last week, right when I got back. So I haven't gotten to watch too much, because while I was away, I was looking at everything on the, um, you know, iPod video or what you know the iPad so I didn't watch much so I have a whole bunch still on the ground to watch but here's the stuff that I did watch in the past week yes yeah, this is from the past week although this is the first update in probably like a month and a half the first one I got now I can't figure out if this was out early or what because on online on Amazon and everywhere it says it comes out in like two or three weeks but you know they had it at Best Buy and it's um mimic the director's cut and I was looking through this and it's you know, I didn't. I never knew that. Um, you know, Guillermo del Toro didn't care too much for the movie. You know, the cut that with the original cut that was out. I never knew about all that stuff about it. But you know, it's a pretty good movie. It's uh, you know, I have liked this movie for a long time. You know, it's the creatures in the subway, and for some reason, I've always mixed this movie up. You know, parts of this movie up with the relic because they both came out around the same time. I think the relic. Yeah, I think they came out at the exact same time, like within a matter of month, month or a year. They made two sequels to this. I know I saw part two. I don't know if I ever saw part three. But, you know, it's pretty good. I know that, um... Yeah, Mira Savarro is in it. Joss Brolin was in it. Charles S. Dut Dutton was really good in it. You know, I, I need to re-watch the director's cut version. But I watched the documentary on it, which was good. This one I had never heard of. It was one of those $5 Mill Creek. And I really like this. It's got Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Patricia Arquette and it's Holy Matrimony and it was pretty good you know Patricia Arquette is working as kind of like an exotic dancer or some kind of like sort of like the sexy dancers at the fair they don't really have that anymore though but it's her like as a Marilyn Monroe kind of character and her and her boyfriend basically rob the money from the um, safe and it's pretty cool I didn't know Richard Riley who's awesome Richard Riley from Office Space got to work with him on a movie called The Obsession, Richard Riley is in it as the boss, and I didn't know he was in this while going in and watching it. And um, basically, they don't know where to hide out with the money, so they end up hiding out with the boyfriend's family. And I think it was the boyfriend. You never can kind of tell for sure, but they end up hiding out with the family, and it's like this religious cult, kind of like Amish, but different, more like... Um, I don't know, it's different than Amish. I don't know exactly what type of cult, it, like religious cult group it is, but it's this religious group, real strict, and they end up having to get married, the two of them. But then the brother, you know, the person she marries, you know, that they stole the money together, he ends up getting an accident and dying. And in this group, you know, if the person dies, you know, the brother of the person that dies has to marry, if, you know, she says yes, the, um, the girl. So Patricia Arquette has to marry Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who's like 10 years old. So then it's them, like, on this journey, you know, trying to return the money because she decides she wants to return it. You know, it's actually pretty funny. You know, I, I read some reviews online that said it wasn't great. I thought it was pretty good. Now, this one I was really looking forward to. It's John Carpenter's new movie, The Ward. And I think it's his last movie, like, feature, I think, since, um, Ghosts of Mars. But he might have done something else in between. I know he did... I think cigarette burns and maybe one or two other things for the massive horror. He might have done something between this. I don't. I don't remember though. I he did vampires, and I think that was either before or after Ghost of Mars. But this was pretty good. A lot of the reviews online weren't great for it. But it's Amber Heard, and um, it's her in this nut house. Basically, starts with her burning down a house. She gets arrested and taken to the nut house, and in the nut house, it's basically the some kind of a ghost of this woman haunting the place. So everybody kind of sees it, but don't doesn't speak about it. And, you know, there's a twist in it that's kind of, you know, you kind of know going into it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say what it is, but it's, you know, it's kind of a little bit more, you know, for John Carpenter, it's a little more like a stereotypical kind of movie. It's not normally the kind of movie he makes. It's a little bit more like a normal movie, you know, not, you know, it doesn't, it just sort of seems like anybody could have made this specific movie. It doesn't really seem very John Carpenter. I mean, there's a couple sequences with some of the music that felt like it. The vibe kind of felt like his movies a little bit. It was, you know, it's really not a bad movie, 
but it doesn't really seem like a real John Carpenter movie. When you compare it to the other things that he's done, it doesn't really seem up to par with them. It's, but it's, like I said, it's really not a bad movie, but it's just kind of typical ghost movie, nothing really that special. And um, this just came out, and this was a fun show when I was younger. I think it was 97, The Angry Beavers. And, uh, you know, I just get this because I, I want Shout Factory to keep putting out all the stuff. And hopefully they'll put out Salute Your Shorts and, you know, hopefully get out Keenan and Kel and things like that. I know they have them on the Nick, um, Teen Nick thing now. You know, they're playing a lot of the 90s stuff, but I like to have the stuff. And I really would love if they kept on putting out, like, all the real obscure stuff. And this just came out on Blu-ray. And, you know, I'm sorry it's, if I'm sweating, it's hot in this room. Because I can't have the air on when this is going. But Wes Craven's The Original Hills Have Eyes. And, you know, I never had a problem with the remake. The Hills Have Eyes remake, the first remake. You know, the second one's alright. But this, the original, you know, remake was actually not bad. But nothing beats the original. Michael Berryman is great. He's one of my favorite, you know, does a lot of the B-horror movies. I've always loved Michael Berryman's stuff. Really nice guy. Met him a couple different times. Definitely, you know, this is definitely one to pick up. And um, the movie's basically, if you haven't, haven't seen the original, it's pretty much very similar to the remake. It's a group of family going out. I think they're going to California or something. But they're driving kind of the back ways, and they want to get a shortcut and sort of see the sights. So the guy at the gas station tells them about this road. They go out on the road, and, you know, they get in an accident on the road. Basically, they put down the chain link thing, or whatever that thing is, to pop the tires. So then things get bad. And, you know, this is definitely one to watch. D. Wallace Stone is in it. You know, I, I've always loved this movie. You know, a lot of people go on. It's not amazing. It really is cool, and Michael Berryman is absolutely great in it. This one I got, it's not 34. It's the Best Buy that notoriously puts the wrong price on these things, or puts like the price of what it would be in six months from now or something. But it's Everything Must Go with Will Ferrell. I think it was $20 or something. Um, and it's Will Ferrell, basically, he loses his job. Um, they're basically downsizing. Now, they're not downsizing, they think that he, that the job he got drunk or something and hit on this girl or something happened and because of that he gets his fired yet at the same time his wife is leaving him and she locks him out of the house and she's gone so he basically has to sleep on his lawn and with all of his stuff and you know the cops are coming by saying you can't do this so it's basically him dealing with his life you know then he starts to try and sell the stuff off you know it's not this movie isn't about a whole lot i mean it's not a real you know, not a ton of stuff happens in it. But, you know, it's a really good character study film. You know, I liked Will Ferrell on it. I really like his stuff. And Will Ferrell, you know, really can do, you know, serious stuff. You know, he really can. A lot of people who do comedy really can do drama. Um, the next one I got is Hannah. And I can't remember all the details of this. When I saw it in theaters, I really liked it. I also really love the scenes at the zoo in the movie. But I know it's this girl that is living out in the woods with her father... And she's got, like, basically all these kind of, like, not, like, superhero powers, but she's strong to do all this stuff. And it's basically her on the run from everybody. It's it's really difficult to explain, and I haven't seen it in a while since the theaters. It's, some of these movies is difficult to explain, but I remembered really liking it. Now, this, I was interested in seeing this. You know, I like Super Size Me, as you can tell. I, I don't, you know, being a fat guy, I actually do not eat McDonald's or any of that stuff. You know, I, I sometimes eat Taco Bell. I don't know why I'm getting to that. But, you know, Morgan Spurlock or Spurlock, yeah, Spurlock. And, you know, his, sometimes his documentaries are hit and miss. The Where in the World is Osama Bin Laden, I think. Didn't really like that. But this one was okay. You know, the greatest movie ever sold. I mean, Palm Wonderful Presents. And, you know, it's basically, you know, it's kind of a documentary on advertising, how it's done. But, you know, it doesn't really show you as much as you'd like. I wish it explored more about how product placement is done in the films and how they pick it and how they disguise it. It doesn't really go on about that as much as it goes on about him trying to get product placements in the movie, in this movie itself, and how he does it. And you know what? It's all right, but it's not amazing. It really doesn't go too many places. You know, it's interesting, but I wish it was more about how it's done in films and talking to the people that do it and things like that, but I don't think anyone would actually speak about how they really do it. Now this one, I haven't watched in a long time. My parents got it. 
Um, it's The Big Lebowski, and I can't say a whole lot about it because it's been years since I watched it. I know I liked it, though. Now, I got some of these. Now, this was on sale for, I think, like $7.99 at Best Buy, and it's Minority Report, another one I haven't watched in a long time. Now, this I was really happy to come out. It came out about a month ago on Walmart.com only. But now it's out everywhere, and it's Ernest Scared Stupid. And these are some of the movies that I cannot believe have, you know, hit Blu-ray. It was one of the ones that I kind of thought would just be sort of left in the dust, and we may never see. You know, hopefully all the Ernest keep coming out on Blu-ray. And, um, you know, but the also this company, Mill Creek, I, I'm pretty sure it's them. They're putting out Camp Nowhere. And a lot of people are going, oh, don't get those $5 ones. They're bad picture. They're really not. I mean, the picture on Earth Scared Stupid is amazing. And, you know, you wouldn't think that. It would look that good. It really does. And to see it in widescreen, too. It's actually in widescreen. The original one was always full screen. And, you know, it's just one of the good, one of the, you know, it's really silly, Ernest movie. You know, all the Ernest movies are silly. I grew up watching them, you know, when they were, as a kid, really have always liked them. And, you know, this one is with um, Ernest awakening goblins in a tree. He says the spell and all the goblins come out and start, you know, turning the kids in the town into stone. You know, it's a really cool movie. You know, it's fun. You know, if you didn't grow up watching Ernest and it's not something that you always loved as a kid, it may be a little... You know, you may not like it, but, you know, if you grew up watching Ernest, definitely pick this up. It's like $5. Now, this has been out of print for about a year now, and somehow Best Buys have gotten it back now. It's still, I think, $29.99 on Amazon. On um, other sites, it's not even listed. It's just out of print, and it's Nacho Libre, which I really am glad, to, you know, to actually have on Blu-ray now. You know, I, I really like the movies that Jared Hess does. I really loved Gentleman Broncos. You know, I love Napoleon Dynamite. You know, they're weird movies, but I love that kind of stuff. You know, I like that new Bucky Larson movie. You know, it's silly as shit. It's raunchy, but it's funny. That's the one thing about that movie. You know, it's, it may have a 0% of Rotten Tomatoes, but you know what? It's funny. There are a lot of really funny jokes in, in uh, Bucky Larson. And this is the same kind of movie. It's a really, it's not a raunchy movie, but it's a really weird, strange sense of humor movie. And you, either you like this kind of movie or you don't. And it, there's no in-between. It's either you love it or you hate it. And that's kind of the same with all the movies that Jared Hess has done. And this is Jack Black as a, he's like a, I think he's a Mexican priest, and he worked as an, at an orphanage. But on the side, his passion is Mexican wrestling. So it's him sneaking out with this really cool Mexican guy. He has like this teeth, and he's always does this, did the teeth too in, um, you know, Gentleman Broncos, this big smile, which is amazing. The guy is great, his sidekick. And, you know, it's definitely a must-see, you know, if you like that kind of stuff. If you like the weird, quirky stuff. If you don't like that stuff, avoid it like the plague. Another one I got for $9.99 was Galaxy Quest. This was about a group of people that had kind of a show like Star Trek. And they're basically, you know, reuniting for this reunion. But they actually end up on a spaceship, for real. You know, by these aliens that take them aboard their ship that, you know, that basically you know, saw a signal of the show in space, and they actually have to try and help them. It's a really funny movie. Um, another one I haven't seen in a long time, I think it's Catherine Heigl's, one of her first movies, and that cool French guy I always liked, Gerard Dupradio, I don't even know how you say it, but My Father the Hero. And this is a really good movie that Woody Allen was in with Bette Midler, Scenes from a Mall, and the whole movie takes place in the mall. There might be like five minutes not in the mall. But it's basically them, you know, that are married couple who have been married for years in the mall. And it's basically this them dealing with all their problems. And they're in the mall discussing things. Things happen. They get in a fight in the mall. That's the whole movie. It's all in the mall. Basically them shopping. I don't know. It's a really... I, oh, I liked it. I've liked it since I've seen it years ago. But, you know, it's a one-setting movie. I like movies in malls. This is like an old, you know, 90s mall. I don't know. It's cool. And I also got John Candy's this is one of the first John, like, second, I think, John Candy movies to come on Blu-ray. Because there's a lot of ones that need to come out. Um, this is Armed and Dangerous. And I can't remember the full plot to this, but I know they were cops and doing things undercover and stuff. It was real. I, I, I love everything John Candy. Um, this is one of the ones that I actually had seen only for the first time a couple years ago, somehow. I don't know how. Now, this show 
It's ridiculous. Sometimes I buy certain shows that I know 10 years from now that people are just going to forget about. You know, and they're going to be like, what? And it's, you know, only in America with Larry the Cable Guy. And it's not a great show. And I kind of just like it, too, because, like, he keeps losing his character when you watch the movie. Like, he's going, well, over there you saw that. Oh, yeah. And then, oh, well. And if you watch, especially in the early episodes, he would, like, drop character and they would keep it in for some reason. And, you know, especially I love that commercial. Well, I was watching TV one night and I noticed there wasn't anything good on. So I realized maybe I should be on TV. Only in America with Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> and I also got, and this was not 19, I think it was $5.99. I don't know if this sale is still going on, but it's the Twilight Zone, the movie. And I have this already on the flopped HD DVD. Yes, I have, a, you know, had a bunch of them. I got rid of most of them. That really sucked how that format flopped. And it flopped like six months after I got it. And it was such a torn between which version to get. And at the time, it looked like HD was really doing good. And then it just flopped out. But, you know, the Twilight Zone, the movie, which is definitely a must-have anthology movie. But anyway, that's all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the last probably month or so. Oh, it's not all of them. I have a whole bunch out of here. Turn on the Corn, the new one, um, Yellow Brick Road, The Clinic, Stakeland, a whole bunch of stuff to talk about in the next one. Probably in a couple weeks, I just got to go through, start, you know, actually start watching those things. But anyway, though, thanks a lot for watching and for subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.